Are you a fan of the book nerd diaries? Do you wish you had more of it in your life? Then consider this your formal invitation to become a subscriber to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash bndpod, where for as little as $2 a month, you can get special perks like ad-free episodes a full day before anyone else, two bonus episodes a month, and episode transcripts, as well as a shout-out at the top of each episode. Our independently created programming depends largely on the contributions of kind listeners like you to keep going, as we currently receive hardly any funding from outside sponsors, so if you'd have the financial means to do so, your monthly contribution can enable us to keep growing and bringing you new content for a long time to come. Sound interesting to you? Then please head on over again to patreon.com slash bndpod and become a subscriber today. See you there, book nerds! Page 13, December 18th, 2020 Hello all, and welcome to another episode of the Book Nerd Diaries, the bite-sized, bi-weekly audio journeys of a bookworm through an endless to-read list. My name is Amber, and, as always, I am very happy to be your host and friendly neighborhood book nerd. Whether you are a new or returning listener to this little show, I'm incredibly glad you're here. Before I get into today's book discussion, I just wanted to say thank you so much, first of all, to Julie and Katie, aka one of the best sisters a podcaster could ask for, for being our benevolent and amazing monthly subscribers on Patreon, which allows our small operation to keep running. Also, thank you beyond words to all of you who have helped to grow our audience by sharing our posts on social media, telling the book and podcast lovers in your life about us, or leaving us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts for those with Apple devices. For instance, listener LR8421 very kindly wrote, a very soothing podcast filled with great content. Your support, whatever form it takes, truly means everything to me especially as my birthday approaches on the 31st, and I honestly can't do what I do without you. Now, without further ado, what do you say? Let's get our book nerd on. Before any of us human beings ever reach the age to enter kindergarten, the earliest teachers we are likely to have are stories. Whether we consciously realize it or not, many of the fables, folk tales, and fairy tales we all grow up with offer some form of foundational message to live by at its core. For instance, Hansel and Gretel and Little Red Riding Hood warn against the dangers of trusting blindly those you do not know, and tales like The Ugly Duckling and Beauty and the Beast, which we read a while ago on our Patreon show Storytime, stand as reminders that the inherent value of a life lies in so much more than someone's outward appearance. The lovely book that I'm going to talk about today, The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho, please forgive me in advance if I end up absolutely butchering that name, is an absolute classic of a story that is not so much merely a novel, as much as it is an extended fable of its own, in the grand tradition of all the beloved stories we grew up with. In summary, The Alchemist follows the story of Santiago, a young shepherd who is sent on an epic pilgrimage to the Great Pyramids of Giza, when he is given a vision of a great treasure he is destined to find there. This book actually first came to my attention as one of the 100 entries on The Great American Read, a 2018 nationwide public voted list of the 100 best novels of all time. I had, unfortunately, never heard of this particular title before, but for some strange reason, the name alone was enough to intrigue me, and the fact that it made such an elite list only recommended it to me all the more. I don't wish to give away any major spoilers for the plot of this book, in case there is anyone who hasn't read it before and would like to in the future. So now, I would like to share with you a few of my favorite aspects of the book, in a segment that I like to call the highlight reel. In no particular order, my highlights are Number 1. Optimism In The Alchemist, our protagonist Santiago comes into contact with a great deal of hardship and conflict along his journey to seek his destiny, but no matter what happens to him, he never once loses his unwavering faith in humanity, or loses sight of his ultimate mission. Instead of allowing himself to become bitter and close himself off from the rest of the world, he instead chooses to see even his misfortunes as blessings and opportunities to grow. It's the kind of grace I only wish I could have in my own life, and I deeply admire it. 
Number two, the comfort factor. The thing that struck me more than anything else in this book is how the plot manages to be both beautifully intricate and deceptively simple to follow at the same time. The language used in this book evokes the soothing, lyrical tone of the stories we all had read to us as kids, with all of the lovely warmth of a bubble bath or a cup of hot cocoa on a cold day. With all of the tension and anxiety that has riddled this frankly awful year, I cannot tell you how badly stories like this are needed right now. Don't be fooled, though. The plot of this book also has a very mature depth and richness to it that only grows as you read, and makes you only want to immediately read it again to pick up what gem-like facets you may have missed. No matter what age you are, or how much time you spend reading, there's doubtless going to be something you'll be able to take away and enjoy from it. Number 3. Morals A lot of the most beloved fairy tales and fables in history generally offer some core piece of advice for the kids who grow up reading or hearing them, and the alchemist offers no shortage of lovely such bits of food for thought to take away with you. For instance, in Santiago's serene determination to complete his mission, it is learned that even the worst hardships are only a temporary thing, and that hope is always far stronger than despair. Also, the story stands as a reminder that no matter where you go in life, it's important to never forget where you came from, or the people who helped you get where you are. These little bits of wisdom are never presented as overly preachy, but are still very much there at the heart of the story, and lends a richness to it that stays with you long after you put the book down. In the end, I would definitely recommend this beautiful book to anyone who, like me, may be looking to catch up on the classics of literature, as this book is absolutely beloved for very good reason, I assure you. This is also an excellent choice of read for fans of fantasy who are looking for titles that lie outside the Tolkien-esque realm of elves and dwarves. The Alchemist, while still including themes of mysticism and spirituality that do indeed delve into the fantastical at times, gives a much more subtle and down-to-earth angle to the magical that is miles away from Narnia or Middle-earth. It's completely refreshing, and may be a good introduction to the fantasy genre for those who may not be as big into it as I am. It's also a relatively short book, at just under 200 pages, not counting the epilogue and other content. So it's a perfect choice if you don't have a lot of time to spare for reading, and would just like something to sit and enjoy without having to commit a ton of hours to it. For those of you who enjoy stories like The Alchemist that beautifully blur the lines between fantasy and reality, I would be utterly remiss not to mention a few of my favorite recent masterpieces of animation, Netflix's absolutely charming animated series, Hilda, and Disney Plus's creepy and sometimes mind-bending magnum opus from the mind of genius Alex Hirsch, Gravity Falls, which just happens to be one of my favorite series ever. Along with this, I would also suggest Maggie Stiefvater's stunning and dreamy YA series, The Raven Cycle, and the incredible Twilight Zone-esque short story anthology podcast, The Truth. If anyone out there would have any further suggestions, please let me know. With that, dear listeners, we've reached the end of our main discussion for today. But please don't go anywhere. There's still more show coming your way after this quick break. And welcome back, one and all. Let's get back to our show. Now that we've reached the other side of our break, let's now head on over to that ultra-nerdy part of our show, the Trivia Corner, where I give you a trivia question relating to today's book. As, obviously, The Alchemist has a lot to do with the mythical art of alchemy, which deals largely with turning any base metal into gold, today's trivia question is going to be all about gold, that ever-so-shiny material that so many people spend their lives desperately searching for. Now, let's get to it. Your trivia question is... What is the atomic symbol for gold on the periodic table of elements? Is it A, A, G, B, A, U, or C, A, R? Your answer is B, A, U. According to my source for this question, Britannica.com, the element of gold, atomic number 79 on the periodic table of elements, is represented by the symbol AU, which is a shortening of the Latin word for gold, aurum. Likewise, AG, which was answer A, is in fact the symbol for silver, a shortening of the Latin name for silver, argentum, 
and any resemblance to an actual element on the table of elements with the symbol AR, which was answer C, is purely coincidental, as that one was off the top of my head. If you got it right, congrats! We've almost reached the end of our episode for today. Before I go, I would like to leave you with our listener poll. On our last episode, we asked who your favorite Greek god is, and your top answer was Apollo. This time around, we'd like to ask you, if you could make as much gold as you could ever need, what would you do with the money first? I'll be posting the poll up on our Twitter and Facebook pages, so please head on over to the links in our show notes if you're not already following, and cast your vote. I'll read the results on our next episode. Due to next Friday falling on Christmas, we won't be releasing a regular episode on Patreon next week, but we will be releasing something from our Patreon to our main feed, so stay tuned, and we'll see you again soon for another entry in the Book Nerd Diaries. The Book Nerd Diaries and its associated shows are written, edited, researched, and hosted by me, Amber Wilchin. Thank you to Kevin McLeod for the use of our theme song, The Show Must Be Go, and Sincerely Media on Unsplash via Anchor for our wonderful cover art. If you would like to connect with us online, you can follow us on Instagram or Twitter at BNDPod, Facebook at Bookner Diaries, or via our website at bndpod.wordpress.com. You can f- also follow us at our new private Facebook group, The Book Nerds Books and Beyond Club. We also have a Ko-fi page at ko-fi.com slash bndpod, where for a small donation you can pass along a special shout out for someone you love, or some good news you'd like to share with the world, and I'll read it out for you during the next episode. If you would like to send any comments, questions, or ideas for future episodes my way, please feel free to drop us an email anytime at bndpod at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, everyone. Please take care of yourselves and each other. We need you. And don't forget to keep on reading. The monster blood changed direction, still bouncing and quivering and leaving white stains on the grass like enormous round footsteps. Joe, stop reading it. This is too scary for me. You're right. It is too scary. If only we could talk about goosebumps in a way that isn't scary. Well, guess what, nerds? There might be a podcast like that called Geesebumps. Geesebumps? Did you mean goosebumps? Maybe. Geesebumps is a comedy podcast based on the works of R.L. Stein, hosted by me, Danielle. PhD. And me, Jojo PhD. And me, Jeff, regular person. Featuring goofs, funny voices, and the occasional critical thought. Geese Geese bumps. bumps! Available on Podbean and everywhere else podcasts can be found.